Well, today the interview is with Perry Kemp, and uh, five years ago we interviewed your father, yes. Willie B. Kemp, and uh, you were mentioned in that interview. And it's kind of strange that I'm being interviewed. I'm supposed to be the kid, and uh, now I've grown up to be interviewed. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's time for the kid to be interviewed, I think, today. Right. Uh, so... Um, uh, uh, let's see, you were actually born uh, in Atlanta, uh, but you were living, your, your parents were living in Ackworth at the time you were born at Crawford alone? Correct. The, the obstetrician was in Atlanta. People either went to Atlanta or Kennestone, which was a fledgling hospital, but the, you know, the real specialists were in Atlanta. So Crawford Long was there. My mom had worked in Atlanta. And uh, I guess they took a chance to drive to Atlanta without an interstate before she had me. But everything <laughs> went fine, but we've always lived here in Ackworth. Uh -huh. So what, what year would that have been that you were born? That's 1952. 52, okay. Right. My wife said, told our granddaughter when she was little that we were born in 52, and she asked us if that was 18 or 19. <laughs> <laughs> we'll assume it was 19. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then uh, you, uh, your parents, well, they were living with uh, your mother's parents at that time? Right. We, the house on Rockdale Farm was the house that uh, overlooked uh, the Shell Station and the railroad, and Mom and Dad lived in an apartment that was on the side of that house. Oh. And lived there for a couple of years until I was about two years old and then bought a house on Collins Avenue. Uh -huh. So we just moved across town. Okay. So the apartment was like a detached no, building? No, it was attached. It was, I don't know how, you know, they got it built that way, but they had a separate door, but it was right there in the main house. Oh, how about that? Yeah. And then, but then within a few years, they moved over to Collins Avenue and mm -hmm. didn't stay there very long either, though, did they? Well, when I was 12, they were there about 10 years. Okay. And when I was 12, we moved over to the Lakewood Drive House. Mm -hmm. And then okay. my grandmother bought the Collins Avenue House. <laughs> oh, okay. Got to keep it in the family. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, your your future wife, Vicki, at that time lived uh, somewhere near there too, didn't she? She lived in Marietta as a young child, and then they moved to Kennesaw. Her father worked for Lockheed mm -hmm. and bought 100 acres out on Way Green Road and uh, built wow. his own house there all by himself. And so she grew up uh, right there on Kirkendall near Wade Green uh, when um, Autry Junior High School was built. That's when Kennesaw Elementary and Ackworth Elementary fed into that, and that's when I met her when we transferred to the brand new school in eighth grade. For Autry. Right. How about that? Uh, and it's 100 acres, that's a lot of land up uh yeah, off of Wade uh, Green. just happened to be the interchange, and uh, Otis Brumby and the Marietta crowd owned everything around him, so he went in and sold out when the interstate came through. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, so uh, so you go through all the schools in Ackworth. Oh, I wanted to ask you one other question, too. Uh, Glenn Reed uh, was one of the founders of the foundation for Kennesaw Junior College at Kennesaw State University today. And um, uh, in 78, um, um, let's see, you and Vicki moved to his house? Is that right, Dr. Glenn Reed Sr. Glenn and uh, Bronzy Reed built that house on the corner of Wood Valley and uh, Dewberry. Uh -huh. And... Um, she raised orchids uh, professionally uh -huh. and had a greenhouse out there with alarms and everything else. And uh, they lived there for many years until they pretty much passed away. And then the Buxtons bought it for a while, and then we bought it from them. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the Glen Reed house in that neighborhood. So you've got a historic house then. Right. Wow. Uh, and um, your parents were like a block away, is that Right, they had moved from Collins Avenue to Lakewood when I was 12. My brother was 10. Uh -huh. And uh, this was kind of traumatic for us because we were the Collins Avenue play group. We played mm -hmm. war and football and baseball and everything else, and mm -hmm. we would play the kids over from the Lakewood group. Uh -huh. And so all of a sudden we, had, we were traded. 
to the to the Lakewood group. Okay. <laughs> so uh, we were just kind of across the highway there, and that was when they took the opportunity to sell Collins to my grandmother as she was growing older. Uh-huh. And my grandmother sold out the Rockdale house to Levi Day, which created the bigger Day Chevrolet. Oh, okay. And then Day, that location became the Holbrook. Okay. Um, now, talk about the Tippin family, your mother's side of uh, the family. Uh, right. They spelled, uh, They didn't put an S on the end of Tippin. It was Tippin. It was Tippin. That's tippin, right. Not Tippin. We've done a lot of genealogy. You know, there's connections and people spelling and all that, but it was right. Tippin. Uh, so Roy and Mamie Tippin. Roy and Mamie Tippin were my mother's parents. Did you know them at all? Yeah, I did. Uh, when I was a small child, Roy was still alive. He had had a stroke later on and was bed bound. But we did walk around the farm with him when we were little kids, and the, the barn was back there and all that. Mm-hmm. He had raised uh, champion uh, Guernsey or Jersey cows and uh-huh. had shown them all over the nation in these livestock shows and then had uh, corn and that kind of farming out back. Uh-huh. And then they eventually subdivided that neighborhood that became the Rockdale Drive neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, that was pretty much the end of it. The Boy Scout Hut was on the end of the road. So we spent a lot of time going past the house to the Boy Scout Hut. Yeah, yeah. Now, let's see, by the time that you came into the world, Lake Ackworth was already... Yeah, I don't, re- I don't remember it as non-Lake Yakworth. I right. think that happened in 5051. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. D- did you go uh, to the lake a-, a lot in the or to the beach a lot in the summertime? Not a whole lot. We rode the little train occasionally and, and all that. You know how it is when you have something close by, you rarely go to it and <laughs> right. take a vacation to something different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, not a lot of beach memories there. But, again, the lake was... Uh, the Scout Hut on one end and Ackworth Methodist Church on the other end. So, you know, we were around the lake all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you grow up with stories about this used to be our farm out here that's yeah, under we, the water? We really didn't connect until didn't. all of us got together with the Ackworth History Foundation and all that sort mm-hmm. of stuff and started talking about it. Uh, we, we were just there. It was... Uh, a small town, and we we went everywhere. It was nothing for us to ride our bikes down to the grandmother Tippins, or it was uh, you know we just did mm-hmm. whatever. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, was your mother the secretary at Ackworth Elementary while you were a student there? Oh yeah. Um, well, that must have been interesting. Oh yeah, I don't know how it came about, but Mom said while the boys are in school, I want a job where I can be home with them in the afternoons, uh-huh. and so the uh, secretary was open. Joe Hayes had just come to Ackworth from Alabama, and he was bringing all of his teachers that he knew and, and hiring them and selling yeah. them in Ackworth. Butch Price, I guess, was one of them. Yeah, yeah, Butch definitely in the Attics and the Abstons, and so they, uh, the Hamiltons, and so they... Uh, came to that school, mom became the school secretary, uh, knew everything that went on in the school. Um, so you couldn't get away with anything. Couldn't get away with anything, but we got to come to teacher pre-planning and post-planning weeks, and we would help them move books and things uh-huh. like that, and they would pay us in Coca-Colas, and that was in the <laughs> teacher's lounge, and we got uh-huh. to go in the teacher's lounge, and nobody had ever been there and, and seen it and lived. Uh-huh. But we were the only ones that uh, knew that. And then when school started, we had to be careful. My second grade teacher was my third cousin and was not told that because mom didn't want us saying, well, she's my relative. And she, they didn't tell you that? They didn't tell us that. We didn't know that until after we'd gone through the year. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but, uh, it, you know, didn't surprise us, but uh, that's just the way it was. Uh-huh. But um, Mr. Hayes was a phenomenal individual and he could read a child and read a family, and, and he just guided them. And uh, Mom kept the books. She did everything from the school to the lunchroom, uh-huh. uh, created a bookkeeping system for the lunchroom, which was later adapted by the county uh, because it was so accurate. She was mm-hmm. a super accurate uh, bookkeeper and secretary. So mm-hmm. she, she was there. We'd get sent to the office with messages and things like that. 
and one of our friends was sent to the office for a message for mom, but he accidentally got in the paddling lineup, and Mr. Hayes paddled him, and he came back to the class crying, and the teacher said, well, what was wrong? He said, I got paddled, and she told Joe, and Joe said, oh my gosh, I've, I've got to do something to give him his dignity back. <laughs> so the next morning, Joe went into the classroom, called William up to the front, and had him paddle the principal. <laughs> <laughs> just happened to be the preacher's kid from the Presbyterian Church. So. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, now you grew up in the Ackworth Presbyterian Church, didn't you? Grew up in the church. Um, very small church, four or five kids really in, in our age group. Mm -hmm. By the time we got to be teenagers, uh, we decided we'd had enough, so we formed our own youth group, and we called it PIG, Presbyterian Youth Group, PYG. And we invited all the kids that we could think of and created about 30, 40 kid group and had a blast. But it was still that little small Aquas Presbyterian. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know your father was, a, uh, he said he was a Methodist until I guess you came into the world and then. Yeah, they had to come to a conclusion, Presbyterian <laughs> or Methodist. And the Kemp family was Methodist and uh I don't know, he folded, so he became Presbyterian. That's where, <laughs> where we were. Okay, so uh, uh, let's see, you, you, you went through Ackworth, and uh, let's see, somewhere along the line, you would have been about um, 12, I guess, when your father bought, Ack or, yeah, That's exactly bought the Ackworth Pharmacy. 1964. He had worked for Dr. L.S. James. Uh, he originally came out of pharmacy school, went to work for Dr. Lacey, mm -hmm. and uh, didn't really gel with Dr. Lacey, and, and Dr. James was so honorable, he wouldn't ask Dad to come to work for him, but he did it through a third party. You know, have Willie B. come and, and talk to mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. and he did, and then in 1964, Dr. James said, you need to buy the pharmacy for me as I retire, and Dad said, I can't afford that. He says, we'll make it where you can. So he was just a super guy. So dad gradually bought the pharmacy and took it over and then, then sold out part of it to Carlos Dyer, who was another young pharmacist who actually married my cousin June Kemp. So now Carlos is family. Uh, oh, he so wasn't until... He wasn't until he married June. Oh, I see. And dad's uh -huh. brother's daughter. Uh -huh. And uh, so dad and Carlos became partners and uh, just you know did a wonderful job. So I was 12. Dad let me work the soda fountain uh, Sunday afternoons from 1.30 to 6. Now, we were open from 9 to 11, 1.30 to 6 on Sundays, so we could all go to church. Mm -hmm. And uh, But we had to have, you know, prescription service for everybody. So 1.30 to 6, I would work the soda fountain, 50 cents an hour. That's uh, $2.25 <laughs> minus 8 cents Social Security. Oh, no. And then I would get that check, and I uh -huh. would go up to Allen's 5 and 10 cents store and, store and buy a model car and put it together until I finally got smart and decided to save my money to get a real car later on. But mm -hmm. I kind of grew up in the pharmacy, graduated mm -hmm. to be a sales clerk, and then kind of work in the back of the pharmacy and as I went through high school and Kennesaw Junior College for the uh -huh. first two years, uh, you know, we became quite a team, uh -huh. the three of us, and uh, I would straighten up the pharmacy, and Dad would complain that he couldn't find anything after I'd straightened it all <laughs> up. And we, we just had a good time. Well, now, your mother and grandmother worked there, too? My mother, after she left um, Aqua School, she became the bookkeeper, secretary for mm -hmm. the pharmacy, and my grandmother... Uh, needed something to do, and we collected Cobb County water bills and Southern Bell phone bills, and we would do it at the pharmacy counter, and you know people would just come pay their bills. Mm -hmm. And on bill day, they would line out the door, and they mm -hmm. just didn't want to mail it. So uh, we created a little post office set up, a little mm -hmm. facade, mm -hmm. and put my grandmother in it, and then we had the uh, bill pay in that looked like a teller window with little bars, mm -hmm. and uh, she did that for a long time. Mm. Wow. By that time, my girls were <laughs> getting up there and, and understanding what was going on. So it was a true fanboy business. Yeah, it was. Um, problem was, when I graduated from pharmacy school, there wasn't room for me there as a full pharmacist because the dad and Carlos were there. Uh -huh. And I went to work at Atherton <coughs> Drug in Marietta. 
And but eventually I wound up buying my dad's pharmacy back, and dad worked for me the last five years that he practiced. I, I was wondering about that. It looked like he was working for you. And right. Dad, um, gosh, I don't know what it really precipitated. It was the, the third-party insurance and Revco and Lockheed and Southern Bell cutting contracts with each other, and we were losing our customers because they couldn't get their prescriptions filled anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, so we saw the handwriting on the wall. And uh, Larry Braden asked my dad if he could buy Ackworth Pharmacy. Now, you got to know that the people in town, we had some people that would run tickets. Uh, they would little charge things, and we'd have to be careful how much they could run up their bill. Yeah. And uh, so they would run a ticket box on us, mm -hmm. and then they'd go up to Lacey's and do that to them. Hmm. And so now we had both pharmacies owned by one person. Dad went to work for Larry. Mm -hmm. And uh, we could control between the two pharmacies who was trying to scam us. <laughs> and uh, that worked out real well. So for 10 years, nobody knew that Aqua Pharmacy was actually partnered with Lacey Drug. And um, then yeah. all of a sudden, Larry called me one day. I'd already left and were doing things in long-term care area and said, how would you like to buy your dad's store? And uh, I had bought Main Street Pharmacy way down near Rockdale Drive. Uh -huh. And uh, so I moved that little pharmacy into Ackworth Pharmacy and created a combination long-term care service and a retail pharmacy. And so Dad went to work for me. <laughs> and uh, he technically finally retired at age 70. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there was something I didn't quite understand. That Walgreens somehow or other fit into the, they they like uh, had franchises or something at one time or oh yeah um how, well how? they they were a, a totally held company see uh, we had uh, revco and then uh -huh. walgreens wasn't really down here they started showing up and they were running the big insurance contracts right uh all the local pharmacies in the county we all knew each other we were all members of the Cobb County Pharmacy Association mm -hmm. and uh, but the the quote chain drug stores didn't really fit in but they were pretty much taken over so I, I wound up through working with Atherton straight out of school they got bought out by Reed Discount Drug which was eventually bought out by other uh, pharmacies and I didn't like it one bit so yeah. I moved over to uh, institutional long-term care pharmacy and mm -hmm. that, that's where I did most of my pharmacy practice. Yeah, yeah. I want to get to that but um, uh, maybe um, stay a little bit in yeah. chronological order. Sure. Let's, let's just go through, you, you, you helped open up Autry Middle School. Yeah, we were the first class in. We actually okay. went half time. Uh, we went Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, and North Cobb went Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays until they could do the final completion, and that lasted about a quarter. Uh -huh. And so after Christmas, we moved into our own Autry building with the Spaceship Gymnasium. Spaceship Gymnasium. Yeah, round, rounded top gymnasium. Okay. That was the big thing. Okay. So we, we were in Autry, and... Uh, well, now, how, was, how was Kermit Ke Keenum? Oh, Kermit was one of Joe Hayes' hires from, from Alabama. Uh -huh. And Kermit and Billy were just great friends, and he was the principal. Uh, we, you know, created the Autry Vikings and, and everything, which is fine. Um, I managed to get almost in trouble, a guy picking on me and... Uh, you know, I would strike back at him, and we got sent to the principal's office, and, you know, Kermit unloaded on us and, you know, said, okay. Mm. Yeah. And then uh, he called me the next morning in and said, I know you weren't the instigator of this, but uh, you, you keep on hanging in there. So he, he was just a great guy. <laughs> Good. Good. And uh, let's see, and then you go to North Cobb High School. Right. Uh, we just... Easy transfer. I, I'd already gotten into the North High, North Cobb band in the eighth mm -hmm. grade. They needed a couple extra people. And my cousin Shayla Tippin and I were chosen to be eighth graders in the North Cobb band. Okay. And uh, we only had one uniform, so we would alternate wearing the uniform. We One would march uh -huh. one week, 
and the other and the other, but you know, that was kind of cool. We had a jump start. Now, let's say you, you played a little league baseball, didn't you, on oh, the way Oh, yeah. Okay, you want to say something about that? That was a blast. Uh, the city of Ackworth had four teams. I, they probably got 40 teams now. But uh, it was uh, Coach and Clark Field, um, mm -hmm. the Yankees, the Cardinals, the Braves, and the Indians. And, uh, and you played were the on the Yankees. You were the Yankees. Third base for the Yankees. And uh, had a wonderful coach in Bill Kirby. And uh, just played ball. My brother was the star. He was the all-star and the big pitcher. He was a year behind me. Uh -huh. And then he went on to play baseball in college. But uh, I was okay with it. But I was I was more involved into my trumpet than I was baseball. Well, I was going to say that somewhere along the line you, you went to music and uh, went to the band instead of... Yeah, I was given the choice. you you got to do one or the other, uh -huh. you know, playing the band or, or what. And uh, I took band, and Alan took sports. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah. well, now I wanted to ask you about your rock band. <laughs> yeah, that was the Huckleberry Asphalt. Uh, don't <laughs> know how got we got that, that name? name. We we were the Brass. This was the Motown era. Otis Redding and yeah. you know Aretha Franklin, and they all had brass trumpets and saxophones behind it. So there were mm -hmm. two trumpets and a saxophone. My best friend Woody was saxophone and a, another trumpeter in the band. And uh, we would play the Kennesaw Teen Club every Thursday night. They gave us these big, tall amplifiers, uh, padded, um, speckled blue. They looked mm. really cool. They said, you can have the amplifier system if you'll play for us for a year every Thursday at the Teen Club. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty much our claim to fame. And then uh, the other big band, uh, rock band, was the Crompton Bar. And they played pretty much the school uh. happenings and all that. Did you do any singing? Oh, no. No? No, just trumpet. <laughs> just trumpet, okay. Yeah. But you know, the singer, uh, Ellie O'Connor, just moved back to Ackward not too long ago, and so I've connected with him and uh -huh. still connect with Jerry Brooks over at the Crompton Bar. So. Well, were you, were, were you seated to, to uh, play your trumpet, or were you prancing around on stage? Oh, no, no, we were standing in the back doing... You know, the the trumpet moves back and forth and the saxophone moves. And yeah. It was a lot of fun. Wow. How long did you do that? Uh, just a couple of years. Uh -huh. You know, it, it through high school and it kind of fizzled out then. Yeah. Okay, now you graduated in 1970. 70. Uh, went to Kennesaw Junior College? Sure did. First two years. So 70 through 72? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Pre-pharmacy, I only took two years at that time. Okay. I thought, well, you know, why go off to school when I could be right there? So I pretty much was home until I got married, went straight to marriage. Well, I worry sometimes if anybody ever took any of my classes back then because I didn't know diddly squat when I was beginning my well, teaching you know, career. Dr. Sturgis was such a great man, and he uh -huh. would always have lunch with us in the Did he? Center. Oh, yeah, uh-huh. And uh, Fred Roach was my all-time favorite teacher. Okay. Period. And we we. So kept... you got Fred for your history then? Oh yeah, Fred. <laughs> Fred, it was amazing. I didn't take a note in this class. He you would didn't. write down the key words on the board, and then he would start talking, and we uh -huh. would be enthralled. Uh -huh. And it gave me an absolute love of history. And you can look at my library shelves and, and know that. And we maintained a friendship with Fred and Carol, mm -hmm. and um, and I was at his funeral and spoke not too long ago. Yeah. And Carol and I now work with the Ackworth Arts Council, so yeah, good, that that was kind of saw. We we had a blast. Yeah, well, I saw Carol up in um, um, Bartow County um, for. I guess for a memorial service for J.B. Tate. Uh, yeah, I saw uh, that. Or, you know, it wasn't a memorial service, but it, a get together at any rate. Yeah. Uh, up there yeah, for the Etowah Valley Tate. Historical Society yeah. put on. But uh, yeah, I, I was at um, I was at Fred's service too. Oh, okay. So. I'm the one that stood up and said. Um, that everybody was was knocking down Fred Roach, and I wanted to come to his defense and all that <laughs> stuff. You know, it, uh -huh. it, it was a really good service. Yeah, well, Fred was funny sometimes, a, a lot yeah. of times. Yeah, so. my wife became the dear sister when I owned the little pharmacy down on the other end of town. Mm -hmm. We had a balloon shop, 
Uh And so she became a character, and people would hire her to crash birthday parties. Crash the oh oh so. yeah you know, come in weeping and uh-huh. wailing and mm-hmm. oh he's getting old and he's about to die and all this stuff dressed in black and um, we did it to Fred at his house one day really um, we we just had a dinner with four <coughs> couples and Vicky slipped away and went upstairs and uh, changed clothes and came back down and Fred was stunned he said. He didn't miss Vicky when she stepped aside, and he thought some strange woman had broken into his house, and and he took it seriously. And we were rolling the floor. Ben and Sylvia Flanagan were there, and Steve and Diane Allred, uh, and and Fred took it seriously. Well, <laughs> so we we've had a blast. Yeah, well that's good. Okay, so you uh, uh, you go to to Mercer School of Pharmacy. Correct, down in Atlanta, across from Georgia Baptist Hospital. Uh-huh. Dad went there when it was Southern College of Pharmacy, mm-hmm. and then Mercer bought it out. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I used to go with Dad as a high schooler to uh-huh. his continuing education programs down at Mercer, and then uh, you know got got accepted obviously there. Okay, so you got your Doctor of Pharmacy. Yeah. Used to you'd get your Bachelor of Science, and that made you a pharmacist, which I did. But mm-hmm. then they had the new degree, which was a clinical doctorate, and I was in the second class at uh, Mercer that did that. So, mm-hmm. so I graduated in 75 and 76. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then, uh, uh, let's see, you, 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 oh, oh, you worked for Atherton's for a while. Yeah, Lucius Atherton, uh, one mm-hmm. of the founders of Kennestone Hospital. Uh-huh. And he was quite a character. Uh, he told me he was going to sell me one of his stores, but he didn't. He sold out to Reed Discount Drug. Uh-huh. But uh, still followed the Atherton family. Uh, uh, j- just a really good family. Red Atherton, his son, uh-huh. was a legislator. Uh-huh. And uh, I would work on Sunday mornings there, and it would be like the state legislature was there. Al Burris oh, and Joe yeah. Mac Wilson and Red and... Uh, Roy Barnes, mm-hmm. and they would all meet there before church and uh, actually figure out the legislation before it ever got to Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, was Atherton uh, still on that corner of the square in yep. Marietta? Yeah, you know, it had blown up when yeah. Halloween in 63. Uh, killed a few people. Mm-hmm. And uh, I actually found a, a hole in the floor in the back room that you could look down and see some of the charred timber that was still there, but they rebuilt it. Mm-hmm. And that was when I was there, after that. Mm-hmm. Great. Uh, so how long were you at Atherton's? Just a few years, just two or three years. And then he sold out, and I just wasn't built for chain drug stores. Right. So uh, I started looking, found a uh, company that uh, interviewed me for a position. And when the interview was over, I still couldn't figure out if he was hospital or a retail pharmacy. And he said, no, I'm something in between. We're retail pharmacists for only nursing home patients. And we went okay. out and started uh, new technology, computers, unit dose, medications, and uh, went and kind of took Georgia by storm. Uh-huh. And uh, we were owned by a nursing home owner out of Montezuma, Georgia, and that all kind of evolved to different uh-huh. ownerships. Yeah. And uh, so I became a a long-term care consultant pharmacist and then moved into the corporate nursing home world and became a nurse trainer for about 10 now, what, years. What does that mean exactly? Uh, did a lot of quality control, taught the nurses, the LPNs, the right way to give drugs. I would follow them on mm-hmm. their med passes and uh, grade them and say, you made a mistake here, this mm-hmm. is what you need to do better. Mm-hmm. And uh, just kind of kept them out of trouble from the state licensure standpoint and make sure that we gave good quality service. Uh-huh. Worked for a very honorable company. And uh, but the owner was a strong Christian and, you know, the patient came first. Uh-huh. And so as we evolved, uh, mm-hmm. I, I was in that corporate end of it and he asked me to create a physician group with physicians and nurse practitioners that exclusively uh, serve nursing homes, which is brand new in Georgia. Uh-huh. And so I formed a, a practice. Uh, the office was here in Ackworth, but all my practitioners were all over Georgia. But we had uh, 12 physicians and 23 nurse practitioners. 
Wow. So I had to keep track. It's like herding cats. Yeah. Now, what exactly did you do? Do you, you go to the, you own the nursing home? The, the nursing home ownership was called Community Health Services, and okay. we were a division, so we served those nursing homes. I see. And so our doctors and nurse practitioners would be in the different nursing homes almost all the time, uh -huh. as opposed to the old system when community doctors would show up once or twice a month, and just they were good people, but we really hadn't reached the the care levels that we should have because mm. people were getting older with more diseases and it wasn't just mm -hmm. residential. It was really mm -hmm. skilled nursing. And so we felt like we needed to go a little harder. So they had a pharmacy unit, a doctor unit, a hospice unit, a home health care unit, a nursing home management. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just one size fits all. So community health services known as Ethica Nursing Homes and Neil Pruitt, Pruitt Healthcare. Uh, mm -hmm. They are the two big players in um, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And each of them have about 60 nursing homes in Georgia, which is about a third of all the nursing homes. Wow. So we kind of set the standard for quality care. Mm -hmm. So I had to retire out of that. Yeah, you retired from that? Or? Yeah, they wouldn't let me. I'm still on a consulting basis with uh -huh. them. And uh, still, still work yeah. with Georgia Med Group, and I handle yeah. all their credentialing now. Mm -hmm. Well, now, and this is where your father was working for you for a while. Uh, we had just gone past that. Strangely enough, my dad just could not sit at home, and he convinced Elder Care Pharmacy, which is one of our operating groups mm -hmm. out of Community Health System, yeah. that he and Mom needed to be the nighttime delivery people. Okay. So ethical, I mean, uh, elder care would send out cars regularly at 5.30 to all the nursing homes they served, but then a new patient would get admitted at 8 o'clock oh. and had new meds. And so somebody had to get those meds to the nursing home. So mom and dad That's would get called, the pharmacist would fill the prescription, uh -huh. and they would take off, and they would go to Somerville, Rome, Macon, Thomaston, they know every, knew every Waffle House in, in northeast Georgia, northwest Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, but they would be out at 2 o'clock in the morning and would go, oh, my gosh, you know, we've got these people. And, but they did fine until finally he was pushing 80. Yeah. And they said, well, we really need to make this more professional. <laughs> so, yeah. And he was mad. Boy, he lost his job at 80. <laughs> Well, now, he said in that interview that he had 12 stores. Does that make sense? Um, 12, oh, no, he had 12 nursing homes. 12 he, nursing that homes. That he delivered to. Okay. And they were spread out everywhere. But you, he said you had 52. That homes. was the Ethica operation. Okay. And so that, that's how the connection was made. And I had come up, I helped start Elder Care Pharmacy here in Ackworth, which is one of the divisions. Uh -huh. And it's still here. Uh -huh. and uh, made that connection and then went on to do the doctor group. Okay, okay. So mm. so uh, you were able to live in Ackworth and, and do that? I've been in Ackworth all my life. I mm -hmm. had, had no desire to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, only my brother moved to Atlanta to an apartment and you know did a lot of traveling, flying for right. manufacturing. But the rest of us, we just all stayed here, and we would just uh -huh. go back and forth from North Ackworth to South Ackworth. Yeah. Well, now, what, what year did you allegedly retire? Uh, allegedly at 2016. My mom had just died a month earlier, and uh, I had just set up my retirement and thought everything's going to be fine, and unfortunately I got multiple myeloma. But I uh, got a stem cell transplant and went through mm. some pretty rough time, but survived it. And, you know, I'm now four years out with no problems. Wow. But uh, so that kind of forced me into a retirement. Uh -huh. uh, then after that couple of years is over, I, I went back to the Georgia Medical Directors Association, mm -hmm. which was the state association of my medical mm -hmm. directors, mm -hmm. and uh, took it over as executive director. I had done that about 15 years earlier mm -hmm. and had moved, but uh, that took it back. So now I'm executive director of GMDA. So, well, yeah, so, I'm retired. So you hadn't <laughs> retired that much. <laughs> well, that's good that you're staying busy doing all, doing things you enjoy doing. Oh, right, that's right. You, you have to do that or you won't live through retirement. <laughs> 
Um, uh, I wanted to ask you, um, uh, let's see, you, uh, your, your wife, Victoria? Vicky, Victoria. Well, I thought I, Vicky, I but I saw, it, I saw it, Victoria. Her, she'll put her name as Victoria. All our friends call her Vicky, and okay. if I say Vic, we we know we got to have a serious discussion. <laughs> <laughs> now she she's uh, played the piano for Ackworth Methodist for yeah she grew up years. her mom taught piano and uh-huh. then she grew up uh, playing and teaching. Uh-huh. And she went through Georgia State and got a, a music education degree in okay. piano. Uh-huh. Uh, but she did not want to have anything to do with the public school system. So she mm-hmm. started a music studio and okay. she would have 30 to 40 students a week. And then she became the pianist for Ackworth Methodist and that lasted 30 years. Wow. So, then I, so now I'm back at the Methodist Church. <laughs> okay, so you left the Presbyterians and went back where your father started. Exactly. Okay. Okay, uh, but um, there was something about national choir tours that... Uh, that, that was a blast. We had Dan Martin, uh, Donna Lucas, uh, Nelson Foster, uh, just a really great team of uh, ministry there, and just blew out the, the youth group. Uh, between Nelson as youth pastor and Donna as, as the youth choir director, we would have 50, 60 kids uh, every Sunday in choir and all these things. And Donna mm-hmm. took them on choir tour every year. Mm-hmm. And it was fun just to be the chaperones because she was so organized. Uh-huh. And we would go everywhere. We'd take a trip out to Texas and choir um, performance along the way. Mm-hmm. One year went to New York City and just terrified that we would lose one of the kids on the subway system, <laughs> but uh, took them to see a Broadway show mm-hmm. as they performed throughout there, and uh, one time to Wrigley Field. Uh-huh. So that that was just, it kept the kids busy. And between Nelson and Donna, every kid stayed busy. They couldn't get in trouble. Uh, if they thought that they couldn't talk to their parents about something, they would go to Nelson or Donna and, uh-huh. and, and be counseled. Mm-hmm. It was great. Wow. Tell me about Carlos Dyer and his influence on well, you. Well, you know, we taught that Carlos was uh, Dad's partner yeah. until he married my cousin June. Mm-hmm. Uh, Carlos and Dad worked well, so well together. Mm-hmm. And uh, Carlos and June, obviously, in the Methodist Church there. Mm-hmm. But Carlos, to me, was known as uh, a mild-mannered but totally honest, totally good person. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I just kind of felt like he was a role model, uh, even to this day. And, of course, mm-hmm. Carlos and June live two doors down from me, between me and Dad. So okay. we're still family. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, we, we still talk and do everything, sometimes have lunch together. Yeah. But uh, Carlos uh, was just a, a great partner. He and Dad... You know, mm-hmm. about the time they sold out to Larry, Carlos decided to to do some other things, and mm-hmm. um, he, he and June have done very well with their children too. Good, good. Now uh, you're talking about the, the your neighbors and what have you. Your brothers moved back to your parents' old when, house. Yeah, when Dad passed away, uh, Alan and I got the house, obviously, mm-hmm. and so he bought out my half. Mm-hmm. and uh, said, I've been looking at this house for 20 years as an architect because he graduated as an architect from Southern Tech. Uh-huh. And he says, I knew what I wanted to do with this house. But Mom and Dad never changed it from the day they bought it. Uh, they added a fireplace, but that was about it. But it never changed. Uh-huh. He said, I know what this thing can do. And so when Dad died, he said, let me mm. take this house, move back up to Ackworth, and uh, do it. And he's mm-hmm. done a wonderful job so far. He's still in the middle of it. Wow, that's great. That's great. And then we've taken the, the latest pharmacy building where Ackworth Pharmacy was, and we're converting the pharmacy space to uh, executive office space now. Where Ackworth Pharmacy is going to be executive office space? Right, right next door to City Hall. Uh-huh. And we got a dentist and a security company on one half of the building. The other half, we didn't know what we were going to do with it, and we finally came up with the idea of um, making suites where people can uh-huh. start new businesses or 
just get out of the house away from the kids and the dogs mm -hmm. and, and have a little office space. And yeah. so we'll be opening that up next week. Wow. Fantastic. So we've been busy as, as brothers. Mm -hmm. It sounds like it. Oh, well, it's nice that you all can live so close together. Oh, yeah. I mean, and the friendships from high school are just unreal. A lot of them are still here. Some of them are far away, but Facebook has connected us. And uh, we, we're just thrilled that uh, most all of our classmates have grown up to become strong families, strong Christians, mm -hmm. uh, just people that have done good things. And still got those relationships well i don't know whether you're aware of it but alan wrote the thing that some very nice things about you oh no i did not know that well one of them that i wanted to get into is the uh, how north cobb christian school came about oh yeah uh hallie my oldest daughter w went to ackworth pre-kindergarten and it was in the basement or it was kindergarten in the basement of the gymnasium and things weren't going well I think there were some faculty problems there and we thought you know when when Hallie goes out in the backyard and wants to bury her homework we know something's wrong and mm. she changed so we said let's start looking for some Christian schools and most of them are too expensive uh we got to uh little church in Marietta called Grace Brethren Church, which had Grace Christian School, and said, this is the place for us. 33 kids, kindergarten through third grade. Mm -hmm. And uh, we en enrolled, and about a month later, they announced they were stopping their school because they didn't have enough people in it. Mm. So uh, another main couple in us decided this was not going to go away. So we reincorporated as a non-denominational uh, Christian school, rented the building back from them for a few years, and then started putting the, the land together here in Ackworth. So between Larry Nelson's parents and uh, the uh, guy that owned the quick shop over there, we put together uh, 10 acres of land mm -hmm. and uh, started North Cobb Christian and built an 11,000-square-foot building so we went from uh, three faculty and 33 up to around three or 400 children. And, um, How many? Three or 400. Three or 400, At that wow. time. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't that many when we got into the crisis. 18% um, interest, Jimmy Carter error. Yeah. And uh, my property and my father-in-law's property were put up as collateral you know, how banks are, and uh, we got behind a couple of payments of $11,000 a month and uh, almost lost our property and the school. Mm. But uh, one sun Sunday afternoon, we just called in all the parents. We, we fit in the little cafeteria and said, uh, we've got to come up with uh, 70 something thousand dollars by tomorrow morning or they're going to foreclose on everything, including my house and the drugstore and my mm. father's property. And said, if that's what happens, it happens, we're okay with it. Mm. And somebody said, well, pass a hat. And so I looked at him. I said, okay. So we passed a hat. $60,000 was in that hat. Wow. Wasn't pledges. It was money and I'll have it in the morning. Mm -hmm. And we said, well, that's not enough. That's, that's the way it is. And then some guy yelled, pass it again. <laughs> And we did, and it came out with over $80,000. Wow. Besides emotionally breaking up, I knew that God had this school in his hand. And from that point forward, uh, well, I, I had left after my girls had graduated out of it because we wanted parents to be on the board. Uh, but today that school has 1,000 students, uh, phenomenal faculty, mm -hmm. a huge sports program, and is doing very well. I think their budget is ten million a year. And, wow! Uh, but from that point, that Sunday afternoon, we knew that was God's school. Mm. We we didn't do anything. It was God's school. Wow! Your brother said that uh, you paid the teacher's salaries for three months. <laughs> yeah, out of my credit card. <laughs> well, you do what you got to do, and then the teachers were good about it. So, so we added a grade a year until we got to ninth grade, and then we stopped mm. a year and said boy are we going to jump into high school and then mm. we did mm. 
it has a high school now? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a Class A private, uh, won quite a few state championships. So all these people that said, well, I'd like to send my kid to private school, but they just won't have the sports experience mm. or, or the mm -hmm. arts experience. Well, mm. that's no longer valid. Yeah. And we support all the other Christian schools here in, in town mm. now. We've got mm. three or four others. Are you still involved with North Cobb Christian School? Not directly. Uh, still support them. And mm -hmm. um, my granddaughter went there. So, you know, we, 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 we just knew it was time to step away mm -hmm. and let somebody else run the show. And yeah. they've got phenomenal leadership. Wow. Wow. Well, that's a great story. Yeah. And I, and I really don't tell it a lot because I'm, I'm serious as I can be. We... We just did things as God directed us to do it, and he tr He tried us out to see if we were going to be loyal to it, and we passed, apparently, mm. and uh, so we just let him have it. Well, tell me about the Ackworth Downtown Development Authority. Um, <laughs> you were past president. When were you the president? Way back when, when Harold Fowler and... Uh, uh, Gosh, uh, Jan Altry and all those people were the, the councilmen. Yeah. Uh, Joe Chambers. And somehow I got appointed to it and uh, was in the very early stages. My job was to get that railroad cross and move from Dallas Street over to Lemon Street and get it flattened out and to get the railroad to pay for it. And so we uh, managed to pull that off. The <laughs> city engineer and I went up to... Nashville to the superintendent of the CSX Railroad and worked to deal with him and uh, they were so happy that they were going to get a couple of little minor crossings closed here. Oh, they wanted. Uh, so yeah, that, yeah. Once you tell a railroad that uh, you're willing to close a crossing, they'll give you whatever you want for safety, safety reasons. reasons. Mm -hmm. And they put that safe crossing in there versus the big old hump uh -huh. uh, that was on Dallas Street. So uh, while we were up there, started out the door, and he'd given me the railroad tie pin and all that stuff. And he said, wait a minute, Perry, do you want a caboose? <laughs> and I said, what? He says, we got some spare cabooses since we're now electronic on the end of the trains, and uh, we'll give the city the caboose. So I said, sure enough. So they hauled the caboose down here, and we put it on a track, first out at uh, 75 to be a welcome center, mm -hmm. and then across from what was battles at the time so that's yeah. the welcome center that i got out of it <laughs> with the <laughs> development authority but then well, the then the uh council changed and i got fired so got fired well you know how it is <laughs> new appointments and uh -huh. stuff like that so just, <laughs> just kind of funny um, i think they should have made you the permanent uh, president oh, no, no 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 I, I do not have the talent of what has happened again it in leadership, if you step into a point, you're always thinking, how, how can somebody do something better? Mm -hmm. and, and then at that point, it's time to move on. Yeah. So now we've got a great development authority and uh, also a great mm -hmm. downtown business association. Well, uh, it sounds like um, your family would have known just about everybody in Ackworth from uh, the work in the pharmacy, among other things, uh, as well as churches. The, yeah, that's the burden I have now, is everywhere I go, I'm having to say, okay, I remember them from the pharmacy, or I remember them from development, or I remember them mm -hmm. from something, and they're going, hey, how you doing? Uh -huh. So, you know, you have to you have to keep your contacts, but your mind starts going on you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I understand. Well, Tell me about how Ackworth has changed and your perspective over the last 50 years. I think Ackworth has kept up. Uh, there's a, a, a rule of thumb about uh, cities and how they go through life cycles, and we did exactly that. Uh, US 41 came over and the, the city business district went down and we looked at empty buildings and things like that. And then I-75 came through, which kind of destroyed 41. And so we had to reinvent ourselves. And the leadership of this council, I'm not talking about just the current guys that have been in there 16 years, and nobody will run against them because they're so good. But uh, 
the ones before, we never had a doubt mm-hmm. that uh, they had Acworth's interest in mind. And as we learned things and did things, it just started snowballing on itself. Uh, mm-hmm. Henry Chandler took a chance on us mm-hmm. and opened his restaurant, and that's what started downtown. Mm-hmm. Other restaurants came in. Uh, the city used most of its plus money to complete what the development authority was wanting to do. Uh, opened up Logan Park and and really did some great things for quote that side of the tracks. Mm-hmm. So now we have a park side and a lake side equally developed. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody's welcome in Ackworth. Uh, we we've never had any racial problems or anything like that. I mean we we just Ackworthians. I like those terms, park side and lake side, right. as opposed to the other side of the tracks. Right, exactly. And and Alan and I, our new uh, offices, executive offices, we named it Lakeside. Mm-hmm. Uh, we want other people to use the word Lakeside. We want people to use Parkside. Uh, but but that's that's a city coming together and always mm-hmm. making sure everybody's on the same page and uh, doing exciting projects. Mm-hmm. The next one. I'm now working on this through the Ackworth Arts Council. We need a performing arts center. So we're working with KSU and with an architect and other people Mm -hmm. to say just what would it look like. And we're going to fund privately uh, all the studies and everything that needs Mm -hmm. to be done to get a concept. But this thing's going to be expensive. So we know it's years down the road, and eventually we'll figure out how to do it. Where would you put it? Hopefully on... Parkside, okay. love to. Uh, that's one of the processes is find enough land and parking mm-hmm. to do that, to put together maybe a five, six hundred seat theater along mm-hmm. with black box theater and, and visual arts things. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, Keith Parisi at Kennesaw is helping us, and so we're uh, we're going to try it. That'll be the next big project while the city continues to improve the streets and do what they yeah. do. But uh, Ackworth managed to figure out who it was and what it would be and take advantage of surrounding properties like Corps of Engineers, Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that we're in a corner of Paulden, Bartow, Cherokee, and Cobb. Mm -hmm. Ackworth is in all those counties officially by the post office. So, you know, we're we're really making a a place to go to. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't see many cities that have done that. Yeah. Um, any uh, community services or whatever that we haven't talked about that you're involved in? I think that pretty well covers it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, try to, I try to stay involved but not elected. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. Uh, well, anything else that you would like to add to the interview? Uh, one thing that you had mentioned in the little write-up that you did that we hadn't talked about is that... Um, you were part of an all-star band clinic uh, with John Williams as composer. Yeah, the, the high school years. I yeah. almost became a band director because I really admired Jack Redwine and I loved music uh-huh. and did pretty well with the trumpet and uh, got selected to an all-star group that went uh-huh. to the University of Georgia yeah. and went for a day clinic with John Williams, the uh-huh. famous uh, Star Wars Olympic theme John Williams, right. and um, uh, got to play some phenomenal pieces, yeah. and then they recorded it on a vinyl record that night on the really? concert. You still have it? Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, nothing to play it on right now, but <laughs> <laughs> anyway... Uh, you know, that, that was the high school experience, uh-huh. the, the, the ball games and the yeah. band trips and the concerts and the things that I was the horse with sleigh ride every Christmas, you know, <laughs> with the, the weenie at the end of the uh-huh. thing. Uh-huh. So yeah. well, that, that, those were the fun years. Yeah. We, we had a blast on yeah. the band bus. Yeah. Uh, My wife was there with me. Of course, she went to the drill team, and that put her on another bus. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But Vicky and I, you know, we've, we've grown up together, and mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's been a blast. One thing we didn't mention, uh, you've done some church mission trips. Yeah, through the Methodist Church, again, uh-huh. they're very active in the men's group. To we've Belize. And Belize and Panama. Panama. Uh, Concepcion, yes. Panama. Yeah. And built a church there, and just... Uh, 
you know, whenever we needed to do something, we did it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anything else you'd like to add to the interview? I think you pretty much exposed my life. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just know I'm going to die here. Uh, it's just, it's just, there's mm -hmm. no reason to go anywhere. We just remodeled our bathroom and made it ADA <laughs> acceptable uh -huh. so we can age in place. And, right. and that's the plan. Okay, well, we interviewed your father five years ago, and now we've interviewed the kid. That's right. Well, you'll we'll have to go after Hallie and Missy and Caroline in a few years. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. You're right. No, I haven't, go I haven't, uh, I've done several interviews like, uh, Harvey and Bessie Durham and then Jimmy Durham and what exactly. have you, uh, the family. But I haven't done the grandchildren of anybody not, yet. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't want them saying certain things, so they're not mature enough to get a good interview. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, and I want them to tell too many family secrets. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. Well, thank you for the privilege. Mm -hmm.